So that's the story. That is the most important story I've, I've ever heard on Impulsive. That wow. that was incredible. That was, bro. I, I'm glued. I'm, I'm even emotional <laughs> just like thinking about the story that you just told. <laughs> Scum lord, you held a bone over your dog's head using a fishing rod just now. Your dog went after it for hours. You did multiple scenes, and then I just found the the bone in the garbage. You didn't even give him the fucking bone. He ate too much of it already. Too much peanut butter in his system, and the bone could clog his esophagus. It's just like a. It's a. Re- you blue balled your own dog. I know, and his name's Blue. Broly Blue. Bro- Broly Blue Balls. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Impulsive, the number one podcast in the world. That's a fact. I wouldn't just say that. By the time this episode's out, I believe we'll have hit 2 million subscribers. So guys, can we please give ourselves a round of applause for finally doing the thing that we said we were going to do for a year? If you aren't subscribed, please hit that button. Today's going to be an awesome episode. Yeah, man. Um, doing vlog stuff now. So, so sh- yeah, sure. I dangled a, a bone in front of my dog and had him run. Dude, Huskies have ADD. You have to keep them stimulated somehow. And so I went like fake fishing for him. You think it would have been looked down upon if you dangled a boner in front of him? Yeah, pr- probably just because like bestiality and all. Mm. Something to think about. You make a lot of dick jokes, Mike. I got to tell you what. Well, I make a lot of dick jokes, but you're at least I'm not a dick like you. Uh, that's true. That's Fuck. true. Fuck. Oh, oh, um, I'm working on, speaking of that, I'm working on uh, raising my libido, dude. Really? Oh, yeah. How's yeah. that going for Not me? good. Not good at all. I'm just so focused right now. Like, guys, life is all about lulls, right? Sometimes you're, you're on a wave of sexual escapades, wild, crazy endeavors. And sometimes you're just running dry. I'm on a very dry spell. So ladies, don't booty call me because I will deny you. And for times you're running dry, there's Blue Chew. BlueChew.com. If you see a... They actually didn't sponsor this episode, but now they did. And we will be sending you an invoice. I want to bring on our guest, guys. He's been, he's been pacing over there. And I'm actually extremely excited for this. Guys, he is a YouTube icon. His channel was the first to reach 5 million subscribers. You most likely know him as the face and creator of the Equals 3 show. He's a founding father of the YouTube as you know it. Please welcome Ray William Johnson. What's up, bro? I'd shake your hands, but you might be infected. Oh, oh, we are. We are. Good. Especially him. Hear this. Do the thing. Do the thing. Damn, Grandpa. <laughs> you sound good. That's what we call him. Uh, <laughs> Wait, how old are you? 38. You're Grandpa, bro. Uh, yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> he looks right? really young, too, though. Wait, you, you look I'm 25. You look 25. Yeah, you got the same thing, been though. been exfoliating and shit. Wait, hold on. I actually can't believe you're 38. I'm 38. Do you have a secret to stay young? I exercise and eat right. It's but your skin. Yeah, I have that. <laughs> <laughs> it's the heaviest organ in the body, by the way. Really? Fun fact, the skin, yeah. Other it than... Is, uh, Dead ass. Yep, facts. <laughs> facts. Dude, thank you for coming on. Yeah, man, of course. Of course. We actually met uh, one time uh, years ago. How was it? I'm sorry. Oh, shit. No, don't. I was going to ask if you remember it, and you don't. I think because I do. I, I, I think said I do, actually. one thing to you. It's the only thing I've ever said to you in my life. So we were at a party, right? Was it at VidCon? No, 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 no. It was at, uh, I can't even remember whose party it was, but it was, it was super crowded. Okay. And I don't even know why I was invited because okay. I'm like, I like not in that scene. Okay. And, I don't recognize like influencers yeah. and I, I recognized you. And the fact that I don't recognize influencers, I don't know if you've ever, I don't know if you know this, but if you don't recognize, if you don't know who a social media influencer is mm-hmm. to their face, they get mad. Oh my God. Yes. They get super oh, mad. Oh, yeah. you, oh, what, you don't know who I am? Yes. This, oh, that, no, you haven't seen my Fortnite makeup tutorials? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is bullshit. <laughs> bullshit. Yes. So anyway, so I recognized you and I was like, that's Logan Paul. And it was before... Tokyo? Yeah. it was. I mean, it was before Logan Paul was Logan Paul. Oh, is it like Vine days? I think it was like maybe Vine was I had either died or it was oh, just interesting. dying. Interesting. Right? Okay. Okay. So anyway, so when I saw you on Vine before all that, like I'm checking out Vine. Like I don't watch a ton of just social media. I, was, I, was I don't ask. recognize yeah. anyone. So... I like I, I'm checking out Vine just to like see what it is yeah. and, and to write it off as something that I don't want to do. <laughs> so I see like I see you and I'm like, this guy, this guy's gonna make it. Oh really? Like this guy, this guy is super charismatic. He's doing like he's you know, the Vine stuff isn't for me, but like he's doing all the things that like hit 
Like he's in his work ethic. He's putting out a ton of shit. And I, I, I said that to myself. There's only one other person I said that about, and that was Andrew Bachelor, right? And, he, and both of you guys made yeah. it. So anyway, and this is before anyone had made it. So fast forward a few years later, and I see you at that party. And, you know, I probably had a few. And you're the only person <laughs> I recognize there, which is why I don't go to parties. Yeah. And so I'm like, I'm going to go tell this guy um, what someone told me when I was starting out. But I'm going to go tell this guy that I think he's going to make it. And I, be- I bet that'll make him feel real good. So I went... And I tap you on the shoulder. I was like, hey, man, come I'm here. I'm so nervous. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no. I, I tap you on the shoulder. I was like, hey, man, come here. And then you like, you know, crouch down and shit because I'm all a fucking Ewok. And I was like, <laughs> hey, man, I just want you to know you're going to make it. And you were like, really, dude? That's so amazing. That's my best Logan Paul impression, by the way. Oh, oh. Dead on. You're like, really, dude? Thanks. And the party was so chaotic and crowded that we were literally like separated right no then. No way. No yeah. way. <laughs> so the conversation continues right now. Right. So so it ended and I'm I'm looking back going, I didn't even get to explain myself. I just walked up to a complete stranger. <laughs> I didn't introduce myself. I just said, hey, man, you're going to make it. And he said, thank you. And then that was it. No way. Yeah. Well, that, of course I knew who you were. I don't know if you know that. If it was evident. But bro, I, like, yeah, I had I a assume. fanboy moment. I fa- that's why I was like, I was probably like, oh my God, thank you. Like, was <laughs> right. that? No, I, I don't assume everyone knows who I am, but I assume you did yeah. because of your reaction and yeah, everything. Yeah. But I didn't get to explain. As far as you know, I was like stalking you or something like I that. Or it was that. like, oh, it's a p- fucking prank, bro. That's or crazy. Whatever. Or you were like just giving him a positive medical assessment. You're going to make it, man. And <laughs> yeah, he was just yeah, like, exactly, thank God. Fuck. Exactly. I've had this cough going for a You're while. You're going to live. <laughs> you are going to live. But... So I actually got that idea because someone did that for me. And I don't, I'm not like a name dropper, but... Um, you should drop that name, dude. Robin Williams. Holy Shut up! Shit! Shut. Yeah, yeah. So back in like maybe 2012, um, I, have to, I, I have the privilege of shooting this little tiny thing, this little scene with Robin Williams that was part of a promotional thing that he was doing for one of those Penguins movies, right? Yeah. And it was one of those scenarios where they invite all the press out mm. and then each member of the press gets to film something with him too. Yeah. It's like a press junket yeah. or something like that. And I was invited from like the social media category, which yeah. at the time people weren't doing. So I was like, this is crazy. And I feel, I'm like the only person here who's not a real journalist and I don't work for a magazine, yeah. but like, okay, you know, like when you're kind of in one of those scenarios... So we go to this like hotel banquet room that they rented out and each group got time alone with Robin Williams. So it was me, him, his handler and like a cameraman and producer, right? And let me tell you something about Robin Williams when I met him. First of all, Robin, Mill- Robin Williams is exactly the guy you want him to be when you meet him. Yeah, I'm sure. He is on. He's that, he, he is the genie from Aladdin. He's like going a million miles an hour. Wow. Everything's a joke and it's incredible to watch. And you just sit there like, oh, Oh, this like so funny. I forgot to laugh, but literally because you're in such shock, yeah, yeah. you're like, oh, this is amazing. But the good thing about him is I know a lot of comedians who can do that, but some of them are so talented. They can't turn it off. Mm. You ever met a comedian mm. like that? Mm. Yeah, and you're just course. like, dude, have a conversation, yeah, please. Yeah. Stop joking. Yeah. But he can turn it off. And when he did finally turn it off, he pulled me aside and he's like, hey man, I want you to know I'm a big fan of your stuff and I've been watching it. I can't believe that you just got an idea and then you just went out and yeah. did it and you just started filming yourself. Like, that's so crazy to me. No one handed you or anything like that. Yeah. And I think you're going to do really well, man. Keep going. Damn. And I like, I like die. Like when I die as an old man, that'll be the second time I die. <laughs> I was going to die right there in that moment. <laughs> I was going to ask you, is that pe- like, how do you peak? On, like, is that peak? That was peak. Robin Williams said he's a fan of yours. I came. <laughs> literally. literally. Yeah. Like, how do you, yeah. how do you fucking beat that? Yeah, you dude. don't. That's insane. You don't. Everything else is secondary to that, dude. Unbelievable. But the thing is, before that, now this was back in 2012, so before that, I had so much doubt about where the industry was going because it was all so undefined. And in fact, there there was no definition of making it in the social media world, Mm. and there still really isn't. Does that mean a certain amount of followers? Does that mean a certain amount of money? Does that mean you are uh, on some TV show? Who who knows? Who the hell knows what it is? But he basically assured me that whatever I was doing was it. Like, that that was fine. Yeah. And I felt it necessary that, like, man, I got to pass that on to pass a couple the torch. Of people. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, wow. first off, thank you. Yeah, of course. Uh, thank and you. look, you made it, man. You got your own, you, your name's on the wall. <laughs> I mean, of course, we, we're at your house. Just so you guys know, we are not in, a, in an actual studio. We are filming in Logan Paul's 
house. Like his cleaning ladies in the next room. If she runs the vacuum, the it's going to screw this entire podcast. We love the you, toilet Maria. is over here. When you flush the toilet, you can hear the turds pass overhead in the pipes. That's how much of, a, of an actual house we are in. How does it, it just feel? Just me, bro. <laughs> How does it feel to know that the torch he just handed you on Impulsive was originally lit by Robin Williams? I feel like I need to pass it to someone more <laughs> you, worthy. You got to pass ASAP. it on God immediately. Dang. Well, I've oh, man, I've I've always wanted you to do well. Like I've always Thank you. always been rooting for you, Thank right? You. And I want you to pass it on to someone else, whoever mm, that is. Mm. I I've had um I haven't passed. And don't the do torch. it to get laid. Sorry, but don't. No, I won't. I won't. <laughs> hey, baby, I, won't. I got a pol- I got a podcast. I no, 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 no. I go, I go, my I, name's on the wall. I th- my name's in the middle of a word. That is a real word. And I just put my last name in there. That's not how you spell impulsive, by the way, for anyone wondering. Like, I feel so bad for the person who's in the middle of a spelling bee and they go, <clears throat> impulsive. And they spell it like this because of this fucking show. <laughs> Happened to me with the word Mackie. I don't know if you remember this. Kettle. Do you remember Andy Kettle? This kid on our football team, his last name was spelled Kettle. K E T T E L, which is not the correct spelling. They gave me Kettle in the spelling bee. And I spelled it like that. And I got eliminated in the first fucking round. God. Fuck you, Andrew dude, Kettle. Dude, Robin Williams would be turning in his fucking grave if you heard that story. Andrew bro. Kettle, dude, you know you were a great wide receiver. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but dude, yes, I, 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 that moment, I am honored that the moment you don't remember. Go ahead. No, no, I do. I, <laughs> I don't. But, but, but it's, it's fine. It, like it, the party was crazy. It was. But um, I appreciate it, and I do think it's an important moment. And I'm honored that. You chose me because, dude, like I said, I have uh, I've watched you since conception. Mac, actually, Yikes. over there, is my friend since I was six years old. Best friend. Mac. And he introduced me to your stuff. Oh, nice. Equals three. Thanks, Mac. And um, You good over there? Yeah, you get your Diet Coke or anything? Uh, fries. Fries. All right. Can really? Can Mac some fries? Can, can, you, can you get him some fries? You want to call it? I mean, yeah. Imagine I just, if he had Uber Eats. You could do that. <laughs> um, I've had I've had a couple of those. I haven't passed the torch, but I've had definitely had moments where I commend young creators for their creativity. Actually, um, David from Vine Days back in the day when David was still in college, David Dobrik. Okay, I I, I was texting him. We we were, had a long back and forth, and I was like, "Yo, I think you're really fucking talented. You're hilarious. Um, you should move to LA." And he was he was st- we've all as young creators had that moment where it's like stay in college, go to college, or do the LA thing. Yeah. Um, but did you forego that moment because you? When did you start YouTube? I'm looking right here. Ten years ago. Yeah. So ten years ago, my ass. I started in 2007. Jesus. Yeah. So it had only been out for what a year. It'd been out. Yeah. I I wasn't counting at the time, but maybe like a year or two. Okay. And the only thing people were doing, other than like uploading videos of their cats or whatever, is it was it was stationary webcam mm. talking head, like all framed like this. People just talking. That's what everyone was doing. Yeah. And I say everyone, I mean like maybe dozens of people or whatever. Yeah. And no one was talking about anything interesting, but it didn't matter because it was so fresh. Yep. And I saw it and I was like, oh, man, I want to do that. I could, I could do that. Like, cause I'm, you know, I'm going to school, I'm going to college and, um, I'm, pr- I'm trying to prep, I'm about to prep for my, my LSAT, which yep. is, you know, to get into law school mm-hmm. and everything. And I'm bored. He's like, I'm super broke cause college will do that to you. Yep. And I couldn't afford a TV, but what I did have was this laptop and I would watch these videos and watch these people in these videos. And I got so into it. I was like, man, I could do that. I could sit, talk into a camera. Yeah. And I, I did. I just started uploading. <laughs> and I don't even remember what I talked about. Probably just like my day. Nothing yeah. interesting. I wasn't necessarily trying to be funny or anything like that. And I just slowly from there got, you know, you get a few followers over a month. And then the next month you get a few more. And after six months, you got a couple of hundred. And you're like, oh, cool. Another six months, you got 10,000. And you're like, man, this is like a soccer stadium of yeah. people watching me <laughs> yep. talk about what I did in school. This is insane. And it just, it all kind of like snowballed from there, That's, I guess you'd say. That is absolutely insane. And you were the first channel to hit 5 million subscribers. I think so. Dylan told me that. I even doubled down. I said, Dylan, I, is that true? Forbes.com. Okay. Oh, so nice. the, yeah, the internet told me that. Dude, that is, that, that, that would have been a long time. I know the crazy. internet always right. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> You you were doing YouTuber things before a YouTuber was a, a thing. Like what? Making YouTube videos. <laughs> okay, I was like, that's a, well, what's a YouTuber thing? I don't know if that's good. So, no, but like when I start when I started YouTube, it was I saw your stuff, Smosh, Jenna Marbles, and like even then, did Shay, you did you Shay ref- doing shit yet? Shay Carl or no? Shay Carl, I think so. Did you refer to yourself as a YouTuber then? Because now it's now it is the most desired job for kids under the age of like fourteen, like. 75% of them want to be YouTubers when they grow up. I don't think I did. I don't know when that word came into favor. And I feel like it's sort of fallen out of favor mm. in terms of like uh, like influencer mm-hmm. or whatever, because no one uses 
or anyone who has half a brain doesn't just use the YouTube, YouTube platform. Yeah. Like you want to, you want to hit all quadrants, yeah. right? Um, so I think the the term now is influencer. Uh, I I know it was a term back then. I just don't know when, and I don't know if I ever referred to myself as that uh, per- particularly. Yeah. I have so many questions. From, oh God! From, from, just from like collabs to like the current state of YouTube versus the past state of YouTube, even like monetization stuff. Okay, we're I'm not to, like we're, I'm not like a YouTube guru, man. It's it is one of many <laughs> platforms that that I have used over the years. But I can try to answer whatever you want to ask. Were times simpler back then, before Adpocalypse, before the bad actors such as myself? Before YouTube <laughs> boxing, before the diss tracks, Ray William Johnson. What was it like? So certainly people weren't kicking the shit out of each other in boxing rings to like whatever prove their point that that wasn't a thing that's fairly new that sounds so stupid i would say what the fuck kicking the shit out of each other it in sounds boxing. absurd because it's all so of it dumb. all of it is absurd. It's so absurd every every single part of what we do is absurd it and is. don't don't take it seriously don't tell yourself that it's anything more than that yeah it is you boxing someone in a ring is as ridiculous as us pointing a camera at ourselves and taking a selfie. It's stupid. It, it, it is. And it's stupid that we make money from it, but it's we so do. Dumb. I look at it, like, I think about it every day and I'm like, what the hell is going on? Yeah. I wasn't even, you know how, like, this latest political climate, people are like, what timeline are we living in? Mm. I was the what timeline are we living in guy way before that because of the shit we do. Because I, like, I can't believe I get paid to, to do this. Yeah. Like, people watch. It's crazy. It's odd. It's very it's odd. It's super odd. Bum fights was the moment for me. When, <laughs> bum, when bum fights came out, I was like, wait, someone is recording bums fighting and making money off of it? Not just recording them, dude. No, no, no. Not just recording them. They would pay a bum right, right. to fight another, another bum, bum that they also paid right. and they would film it. It was crazy. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> but how did you have the uh, the charisma? Have you always been this like charismatic, big personality? Because that's the thing. That's the it factor that 99% of people striving <laughs> to be YouTubers do not have. Uh, yeah. So, uh, I don't know. I don't know if um, I. Th- so I, I go through like um, phases where sometimes I'm like chill and relax. And then mm. sometimes I'm sort of on. Mm. And anytime that I get on camera, it's um, you get that like nervous energy. It's like you people say, oh, just be yourself on camera. I think it's almost impossible to be a hundred percent yourself Absolutely. in the same way that, that, uh, you know, okay. So if you went through your average day, yeah. but either of you, you're going through your average day. Now, tomorrow you're going to go through your same average day, but your mom's going to be looking at you the whole time. It's like, you would act slightly different. Yeah. Even if you weren't trying, like, no, 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 be yourself. No, no. You, you like, even if you weren't trying to act different, you would act slightly different. So when the camera's on, it's the same thing. It's yep. so weird. It's yeah. so weird because we, we have conversations all day where, the jokes are slap all day, boom, boom. And they're the kind of jokes that make people fall out of fucking chairs. Yeah. And then when we turn the camera on, we're like, yo, how do we, or for myself at least, I'm like, how the fuck do I get back there? Like when the camera goes on, I'm always slightly not as good as I am in just casual conversation. When, yeah. when, when it, you know, it's A lot just, of people are like that. Dude, yeah. dude, how many funny people do you know? Anyone. How many f- hilarious people do you know in real life who just simply cannot translate it to a means of monetization such as a YouTube, a TikTok, yeah. stand-up comedy, whatever. Some people are just funny in real life. Most of the people I know who are funny in real life can't translate it to anything, right. including right. stand-up, right. including yep. anything at, at, at all. Like they go to their job and, you know, in finance and then they go home to their wife and kids and that's that's just it. They're just funny personality Some of them person. don't want to, too. You know you, what I'm saying? Well, Some people yeah. don't. You have to want to be an entertainer to be an entertainer, right? Well, you got to be a little fucked up. Facts. Like, like, you got to <laughs> gotta be like, man, I, did, I, just, I didn't get the validation I needed growing up and I need it from all million of you. Yes. Is that... Facts. I know you went through the struggle of, just on that note, validation from views and likes and subscribers. Are you past that? Yeah. How far past that? I'm assuming a while. Well, the thing is, so I've been doing this for, you know, what, almost a decade and a half. So it's sort of what I do. It's not necessarily who I am, but it's what I know how to do. Mm -hmm. Like, I know how to do social media stuff. I know how to monetize it. I know how to make money. I know how to, like, keep adding to your catalog so that the bigger your catalog gets, you'll always be churning out revenue. I I just know how to do it. Do I care, like, about likes? And not really. I... I care about that stuff as much as like, I mean, I'm trying to trying to think of a, a, a cool metaphor. You know, like in a relationship, there are certain things you look for mm. and then there's some things that are secondary. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So making qual- content that I want for people who want to see it is first and foremost and, and like being creative 
And there's a, a, a huge part of me now that I'm sort of evolved into that wants to use entertainment to help people, right? And and oh, I did see some of this on yeah. your recent uploads. So so that is incredibly important to me. The likes, it's it's a vanity metric. So the ma- so your main thing, like uh, her per- the girl's personality, is making stuff you want to make and giving people value. The girl's personality, the fact that she can make n- really good gnocchi is right. like the likes and right is like, like a secondary. Like she got a she got a a, a, a tramp stamp, and I'm like, okay, that's f- I, I can deal with deal that. With that's yeah. fine. Likes yeah. and that's the likes. You know the secondary. Right, shit. it's yeah, secondary. Yeah, yeah. yeah. facts. <laughs> A tramp stamp. God, that's so I thought, terrible. I thought you were saying she was like she was like knock kneed or something, or had like pigeon toed or something. Oh. Well, no, I thought you said it was a secondary benefit. Oh. Now you're talking about bad things. Yeah, I know. Not I know. that there's I, anything I, I wrong totally with a nice up, tramp stamp. I totally screwed up the. I totally yeah. Let's just talk about all the things that we don't want in women. That'll go over really well <laughs> with three. All, idiot yeah, guys. exactly. There's there's so much testosterone in this room. You guys need some more women in here. I'm telling you, this Danny. Is, a, is there any more of you running tool? around? Danny's does not. She, a, Danny's a real one on one. It's a total bro cast and, in here. And she ain't exactly like the most uh, estrogen filled woman either. Like she's a bike riding, hunting, MMA boxer woman. Wow, with a ton of testosterone. Testosterone. When you said your assistant kicks ass, you literally. Oh no, she, oh, she, she kicks meant. ass. Dude, Austin McBroom came in my backyard the other day, uh, trying to prank me with face rug and like masks on. Danny I don't know what the- any of those words mean, but uh, <laughs> go on. <laughs> not, not even mask. Couple okay, YouTube, couple YouTubers. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay. She came out there with a paintball gun, defending the house, hold, holding them. down the fort. Hell yeah! Yeah. Did you hit one? Um, I, 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 shot. Oh, nice. The warning nice. shot. <laughs> nice. Uh, but yeah, okay. So these are your recent uploads, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's cool because you said you're trying to help people. Is that is that is that the motive right now? Is that the uh, the goal? Yeah, and there's a there's a crazy story about it, and I'll t- I'll tell it to you, but it might change the tone of the podcast. It's a pretty serious story, and it's a little lengthy, but it's impulsive. If, okay, Go let's do it. it. Whatever okay. you want. So uh, my dad died. Okay. Now the story doesn't go the way you think about. It. So he he was never really in my life. Like he was um, when he was married to my mom when I was um, right when I was born. He was he was like pretty abusive guy, had substance problems and all that. And then growing up, he wasn't a picture. He was a deadbeat. So when I was 13 years old, I was fighting with my mom a lot, just a single mom. And I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to like have a relationship with my dad. I'm trying to go live with my dad. That's going to be cool. So I went and lived with my dad and he was like the cool dad. Like, you know, like he'd let me have a beer every now and then. And you know, I'm 13. So I'm like, this is, this is amazing. And it was like the next state over. So it was, it was far away from, you know, my, my mom and all that, that I could be. And it took me about three months to realize that this was not a good idea because this guy was this guy was a drunk like a really bad alcoholic so he was an addict he smoked weed all the time which is not a huge deal except that he never had a job the entire time i was there nor did he have one years before or after he lived off his he mooched off his girlfriend who actually did have a job yeah um he did a lot of meth and when i say he was abusive he would smack around his girlfriend and my half sister, who was from a different family, right? So she lived there too. So he would smack them around, like get super drunk and violent. He, I remember one day he picked up a, like one of those big ass mason jars of loose change and threw it at his girlfriend's head, like full of change. You know how heavy that is? And it's shattered on the wall. He took a, uh, like a, a wooden broom and he speared it through the wall, throwing it at his girlfriend. Holy shit. Like speared it into the sheetrock. Like dude was super violent, right? Yeah. And I was young enough to know, like I watched, he was never abusive to me. And I don't know why, probably because my biological grandfather would have destroyed him because he was a mean old man, but he was never abusive to me. So I just had to watch everyone else go through it. And I was young enough to know that it was wrong, but I wasn't, I wasn't old enough to know that I could actually do something about it by like telling the police or telling a teacher. I was like, well, there's nothing I can do. So the school year finished and I moved back with my I was like, mom, I want to come back. She's like, yeah, I thought this would happen. Come back. And um, I went back and like, I've appreciated my mom yeah. ever since because then I realized, oh, our petty disagreements were, were just nonsense. Yeah. yeah. But I told myself, man, I'm, I'm never talking to that guy again. He is a, a nightmare. So three years after that, I still hadn't talked to him. He, he has my social security number. He has all my bank account information. He goes into one of my, my bank accounts and he took out all the money. And like it, that was the bank account that was for my college tuition. 
Now, realistically, there was only like 2,500 bucks in there, but that was all the money in the world to me. And yeah. that was going to pay for my freshman year of college. And he straight swiped it. And I told myself again, I'm never, never talking to this guy. Like he's, he's the worst of the worst. Like every story I hear about him, it just gets worse and worse. So 10 years after that, maybe eight years after that, I still hadn't talked to him. He hadn't reached out or anything like that. No, no amends, no I'm sorry, anything like that. I get a call from my half-sister, the one that I watched him beat the shit out of her. And she's like, hey, I want to let, she's, she's roughly my age, but she's like, hey, I, I want to let you know I'm getting married. I'm calling everyone around, you know, everyone in the family and letting them know. And I was like, really happy for her. And the guy she was with was like really nice and all that. And I, you know, I asked her, I'm like, hey, I haven't, I haven't talked to dad. I'm any updates on him. Like, is he still alive? Is what's going on with him? She's like, yeah, I, uh, I took my fiance to go to his trailer to visit him because, you know, that's, you know, you introduce your mm. fiance to your parents and he's technically my parent. And she didn't have a good relationship with him after she left either. So she goes to introduce her fiance to him. And my dad was like fallen over drunk. And he knew she was coming. This wasn't a surprise yeah. visit. And he's so wasted that he hits on her. Like he made a pass at his own biological daughter in front of her fiance. And her fiance, I think, almost kicked his ass. But, I, but again, it was just another story that I was like, I'm never talking to this guy again. I'm just like every step of the way. I'm like, I'm so glad that I never rekindled that relationship. So here's where it gets interesting. It's already pretty interesting. <laughs> So back in maybe 2014, I get a call from my mom. My mom's like, hey, uh, I just want you to know I got an update on your dad that you want to hear. I'm like, all right, wh whatever, mom. What is that low life doing? She's like, well, he has cancer. And you know, I'm like, oh, Jesus, that's, wow, you know, my bad. I, didn't, I was kidding. I didn't know. She's like, yeah, it's really bad. It's like spread to his, you know, his lungs and his liver and I think his jaw. So by the time he went to the doctor, it was like everywhere and, and he's got about a month or two to live. And I was like, wow, that's, that's crazy. I didn't know what to say. And she's like, yeah, and he wants to see you. And after all that, everything that I had been through, I couldn't say yes. I had to say no. I, I can't. And about a month later, he died. And so to me, my point of my story is that it was then and there that I realized that I didn't want to be like him. Not, not just in the sense that like, you know, I don't want to be an addict and all that. But here was a guy who fucked up every relationship he had with anyone who would have ever cared about him. His girlfriends, his kids, his other family members, everyone. And on his deathbed, he wants to be like, oh, my bad. Can we have a relationship now? I just, you know, can we do that? And so I looked at that and I said, that's not going to be me. So what I did was I started working on myself. I started working on myself. I started working on every relationship that I had. I started being more outgoing and forthcoming with my feelings, especially the positive ones, like telling people, hey, man, I think you're doing really great. I think you're going to make it. You know what I'm saying? Doing that kind of stuff and really getting into like self-development and, and self-improvement on myself because I firmly believe that you got to work on yourself before you can really help anyone else. So I've been on that journey for maybe five five years or so um and now that i'm now that i've been doing it so long i got this vibe like i i gotta give back it's time to give back i gotta help other people with you know what they're going through i gotta help them find themselves and who they are because life's complicated it's hard to figure out we don't have a definition of what the hell making it is we just got to assume that we've made it so that's what I'm doing now. And so I got this idea that I'm going to start a brand. Now, do you know how brands represent their product, but they also represent something more like Nike? They make shoes, but they represent like sport, right? And Coca-Cola represents like classic America, not just soda. So my idea was I was going to make this brand, and this brand was going to represent helping people and helping yourself. Somehow, somehow I'm going to make that work. So I started a show. Um, a couple months back, I just wrapped the first season. 
um, and put it on all the platforms. I started the, the, you know, there's like a Facebook account and an Instagram account, all stuff that like just launch and it's all geared around self development. Is now, it, is, that, is that superhuman? It is superhuman. Cool. And people, you know, people ask me like, well, is, you know, is that going to make money? I'm like, well, money is like the, tr- the tramp stamp of this conversation. <laughs> it's, it's secondary. I want to help people. I, there are other ways I make money. I'm doing fine in that department. Been doing this long enough, right? So that's the story. That is the most important story I've, I've ever heard on Impulsive. That wow. that was incredible. That was, bro. I, I'm glued. I'm, I'm even emotional <laughs> just like thinking about the story that you just told. Um, I was I was wondering what you were gonna say. You did when it was at the uh, the cusp, the precipice. Um, it was hard. I mean, and obviously, I still course, think about for it. For sure, for sure, for I still sure. Think about I was gonna, it. I was going to ask: Is do you do you regret that at all? Do you regret not 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 visiting him? I don't. I don't. But I still think about what would have happened had I gone. I think if I had gone, I think I would be mad at myself. I'd be like, man, I I gave that. I gave him exactly what he wanted, and yeah. I and, and he didn't learn the lesson that I feel like I want to learn from that. Which is like sometimes there's no going back. Yeah. Sometimes when you when you screw over people that really care about you and your well being, like that is it. That is a that is a very grave, very serious, very heavy example. But we in this house have um, been revolving around the word describing the scenario, which is accountability. Accountability, yeah. like accountability, is is so fucking huge. Yeah. And I think um, our generation will carry that so much with so much more weight than than the previous ones because especially with social media people are being held accountable for their actions yeah and and i'm i'm i mean i don't, I don't know the man but I, I i'm glad you did not give him a, a pass because it, it's it that's that that stuff sounded horrifying and um yeah i can imagine going through it and even just hearing about it through your half sister was uh very traumatic so some condolences some people it's fine man some people you know in the family did because they see it differently than I did, but, uh, and some didn't. And I was one of the ones that I guess is like, no, I, a, I say it firmly. Like, no, I was like, no mom. But it, you know, it took me, it took me a dude, minute. Like dude, it was heavy. I mean, yeah, of course. Straight up. Of course. It was heavy. It was a hard decision, but, uh, no. It's such a common deathbed request yeah. from people to see the people that they've wronged. And it's, that's a, it's, it's such a cliche. Yeah. And I, I always thought it was a cliche like from movies or whatever until it happened to me. And I'm like, no way. This is this guy. He's got a month, and now he's what, like, what are we gonna catch? Are we gonna play catch? What is uh, what's gonna happen? Like, he's never been in my life. Ever. I always I always wondered about this moment too because I always thought like the easy like what's the easier thing for you? Is it to go and to and to fulfill that last request, uh, and then be mad at yourself because you gave in and you gave them that peace before they passed, or is it harder to put your foot down and then ha- spend your life thinking like, should I have gone? You know what I'm saying? To give him that last bit of peace before he moved well, into the next. And it's, yeah. And I totally agree. And and it's, it's indicative of the position that he put me and my half sister and a lot of other yeah, people in, which sure. is like, he put me, his kid in a position to make a parental decision mm. to teach him a lesson. Yeah. And that's not a decision. That's not a position you want to be in when you're a kid. It's not a position you need to be in. You need, you know, parental guidance and some of these things. Uh, and the really bad parents will sort of reverse it on their kids. And that's, that's what he was. It's exactly what he was doing. Even into my adulthood, put me in that position yeah, to be wow. like, no, no, you go, you got to teach you a lesson. That is and crazy. that's garbage. That I, is crazy. I I don't have kids. I don't want kids for that reason. Really? Yeah. It was that bad. That well, not not that reason. I don't want kids because I. That's just not my <laughs> contribution. That's gotcha. not the way I'm going to contribute to the world. Gotcha. Okay. Right. Who, who's who's superhuman uh, aimed at? Is it aimed at people it's who are struggling at, with with those kind of situations, mental health, addiction, or or just people that you just want to help grow? It's it, it's aimed at anyone who needs help. Okay. Yeah. Like like right now, it's not. It's so broad. Yep. It's like, this isn't one of the slogans, but if, you know, a slogan like believe in yourself, that could, that could, you know, uh, attract anyone. Right. Right. So right now it's, it's broad. It's, it's, it's people who want to help themselves and people who want to help other people. That's a, that's a massive, uh, departure from equals three. It is. Um, look, my humor will always be there. Yep. 
right? So there's there's still some of that injected. But yeah, so the 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 equals three of it all, the social media part, the the part of me that does other things, it did very much what social media personalities do, which is you turn a camera on yourself and you go, look at me, look at me, <laughs> look how great I am and how funny and how important I am. Yep. And, you know, I, I've, I've done that for a while and it's felt, honestly, it's felt empty for a really long time. Yeah, like I just sure. don't get that joy out of it. And part of my, part of my discovering that was a few years ago, I got this idea because I get these ideas and then I just go for it. That's just part of my personality, yep. right? So I got this idea. I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to try stand up. That looks like so much fun. I'm going to do it. And I did it and it was hard. <laughs> but I got, you know, you get good at it. And I toured around America for two years. That was just a couple years back. And when I was doing these tours, like part of the um, part of the appeal is that you meet the fans afterwards and they take a picture with you and they love it. So people would come up and they'd be like, man, that was so funny. That was so great. You know, you're amazing and all this stuff. And it, and it there's a certain amount of validation that goes into that. You're like, yeah, I'm yeah, great. Yeah, I'm funny. For sure. But what they also told me was something that really shocked me and they they would say things like you've always inspired me you, mm. you're so inspiring i started my thing because of what you did and i never knew that and i never knew that i would have that impression on people. power that power now that cool. feeling that they gave me when they were like yeah that was so that was so you know i looked up to you and you were inspiring that feeling was in completely different from the you are so funny wow oh completely yeah completely different oh yeah and once I started feeling that over and over again, it started giving me these ideas of like, I think this is dir the direction I need to go. This is, I'm not going to have kids. My contribution to the world is going to be something completely different. I love mm. it. Right? How much more, how much more was that? Um, Cause I, I, I've just started dealing with it over the past six or so months myself, you know, like I, I've built my, myself on a platform of addiction. And so when people say to me, like you talking about addiction has helped me stop doing heroin, it's happened, whatever, right? It's amazing, right? How much better does that feel than the AdSense check hitting your bank? <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm sure you got so used to that cha-ching, cha-ching and letting that run everything that when you felt that first person tell you, yo, you, you inspired me to make a change in my life. What did that feel like for it, you? It's hard to make a comparison, but yeah. let me, let me, here's why. Because with, with the, um, the social media money, the, the, the AdSense check, I guess, as you call it, uh, there's, you know, the first month of having sex with your girlfriend and then there's nine years into right, it. Right. Right. Yeah, of course. So I've been, I've been, you know, uh, <clears throat> having sex with that AdSense check for <laughs> nine years. years. Oh, nine years yeah. Old. Like at some point, <laughs> at some point the feeling is it's, it's good and the security is amazing, but the feeling is not quite the same. Yeah. And then, you know, new hotness rolls in and you're like, Ooh, shiny. Helping that people. feels good. Yeah. yeah. yeah like the, this is a different feeling. This is a more, uh, there's a more mature feeling. It's more, uh, oh, fuck, what's the word? I'm fulfilling. Mm. Something tells me that one doesn't fade. I, I, it doesn't feel like it does. Like that, that's like a 50 year run. Yeah. Just every, cause I bet you every time someone says to you, you changed, you, you inspired me to do this or you helped me out of this dark pit or whatever. Yeah. It probably feels as good as day one. Well, I don't have those moments where I, we probably all have these moments where you look around at everything you're, that's going on in your life and you go, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> What the hell? Like, am I am I gonna be doing impulsive for twenty years, or yeah. a podcast gonna fade out in the next six months? Like, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah. So, so when I do this and I start helping people, and I go, I know exactly what I'm doing. Nice. I know exactly what I'm doing, and I I know how good it feels. Was there a point where you didn't know what you're what you were doing? Did you have a creator confusion or a burnout, like all of us do at some all, point? All of it. All of, like my creator confusion <laughs> was probably a decade long, dude. And Man. I'm, I, I, I'm hundred percent sure that you still have, if you don't have it, you have moments of it where you go, what? Yeah. I'm boxing now. Who? What? Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's weird. Absolutely. It's, it's crazy, yeah. right? Because, because you know that next year you might be doing, you might be doing one of those things really hardcore or you might not be doing any of it. Yep. It's, it's odd, dude. I was a gamer for a minute. I I, I did the Twitch thing for. I spent that like, was amazing. Yeah, for thirty thousand dollars on equipment. <laughs> it was my in favorite room. part of this friendship. Thirty thousand dollars. <laughs> Wait, what? No, no, it wasn't. But I did have a lot of fun because you you were actually kind of good. I got good towards the end, yeah. but when I started to get good, I streamed less because I realized. Shout out gamers, streaming is hard. Yeah, it is. Streaming is hard. Yeah, man, I, mean, I was terrible. We gotta dude. be on for a little bit. They gotta be on all day while they're playing games. Yeah. Anyways. Well, I mean. I, I, 
everything <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna like um, buff us up a little bit. Everything we do is harder when people who haven't done it actually get in and do it. And they go, oh, there's a lot to this. Oh my I thought God. you just get on camera and, you know, tell a few jokes and fart into the microphone yeah. and, and then you get a million dollars. Throw that memory card to the editor. He takes it, runs with it, uploads it. You yeah. don't look at it again. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right, and you got to go, dude, if I had to calculate my the hours that I put in every week <laughs> for just the basic things that you don't even think about, they would probably run somewhere around 70 or 80 Facts. hours, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. Always, always on. Last night was Sunday night. It was movie night. We were hanging out. Actually, we were watching Sons of Anarchy. Did you did you watch yeah, that yeah. show? Yeah, about four seasons. He, so he never he never saw it. So we were watching it last night. But I mean, every five minutes or so, he'll pause it and go back to the to the edit, and I'll take an email, whatever. You know, it never turns off. Yeah, there's never yeah. a time where you're like, "Yo, I'm off today." No, you're fucking not. You know, you know, you, why I like that is because um, with our line of work and. Uh, a lot of other lines of work too. We we can surprise people very very easily. Like if if someone tries to get in our industry and they have minimal knowledge of what they're doing, it's gonna be next to fucking impossible. In the last episode, I said this: the barrier to enter for YouTube is so hard. It is such a difficult yeah. medium to break in. So we tend to surprise people with what we are able to accomplish. I guess what I'm trying to say here is a message or a lesson that I got from a guy by the name of Jeffrey Katzenberg. <laughs> I met with him two, three years ago. Just <laughs> name drop. That's <laughs> no, an important name, though. You know what Gene about. Hackman told me? <laughs> <laughs> he said, uh, I, I was like, yo, is there one piece of advice you can give me? And he said, exceed expectations, which is unknowingly what a lot of creators are doing. And uh, it's a piece of advice that applies to every, every part of life. Exceed expectations. If someone expects you to operate at this level, operate fucking here. Oh, yeah. If you are constantly doing that in life, not only are you going to be fulfilled, you probably end up being really successful too. Under promise, Absolutely. over deliver. Yep. yep. That big is one of the biggest rules you'll ever get Absolutely. in life. Tell oh. people you can't do shit and then blow them out of the fucking park every time you do it. I, I, I mean, this, this should go without saying. I forgot to ask because I've dropped so many F-bombs. Like, it's cool. Well, you guys going to bleep, bleep it out if no yeah. not on this show no nah. fuck shit bitch. no you can't and, you can't swear it's not i can't no I can't, you no. can't say it's not but you can say the rest of the words oh, okay <laughs> can't say it's not titties and feet is that that's cool? fine titties it's all good feet. it's all good yeah. well so, no see because i was you know we could do, i could come in and do a good podcast but my actual goal is to get this episode demonetized it that's already cool. is we, yeah. we demonetize everything oh, can we do like a, i don't, you can't do that no, I'm not saying do it. I'm saying say, talk about say it. the words. Yeah, it'll go. Say the words because, yeah. you know, it'll get caught up in that filter. The algorithm, yeah. yeah. And now, like right now, the you know, you have to like manually review. You do no, manual no. review just because I said Nazi, Nazi, Nazi a million times. He said on the last episode, I don't know. I don't. Does, does the YouTube algorithm, you might know, does the YouTube algorithm hear these words? Do yes. They? Oh, yeah. Yes. Absolutely. What? Yes. You know that. That's why you have oh, to blank the swear. No, I, I can prove it to you. <laughs> no, it does. Who does the automatic captions? I don't, wait, I don't know. YouTube, YouTube does them. They of do? course. They're this automated. Is, yeah, you just hit, fact. and then they're, they're automated. Now, they're wait, not all correct. I was but about to say, why do they say some <laughs> fucked up shit sometimes? Dude, some of my automatic they're, captions are ridiculous. Right, but they'll pick up words like Nazi. And if they pick up that word. Are they sure you didn't say Yahtzee, the popular board game? They, they, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. They're going to err on the safe side. Son of a bitch. They're oh, going to yeah. err on the safe side. But Err on the safe side and put in the bad word. <laughs> do some uh, podcast, you know, ad reads or whatever. And this episode of Impulsive has been brought to you by no. Tampax. <laughs> uh, that'd be, Whoever's that'd sponsoring. Be that'd be an honor. Yesterday was International Women's Day, so it's, very, it's quite possible. There you go. We do boner pills. Blue we do. We do yeah, like yeah. personally, or are you talking about sponsors? Both. Uh, both. Okay. Yeah. Depends on the day. Whatever. <laughs> These days are long, dude. Sometimes I need a little extra help. But thanks to Bluetooth, it has not sponsored this episode. We That's have to convince them to sponsor. We're gonna send you two invoices. Um, <laughs> your your brand's pretty uh pretty edgy, yeah. My my personal brand? Yeah, you just talked about Nazis, man. I yeah, I mean whatever whatever gets the laugh. I would say the the line for what is edgy sort of moves every. I don't know yeah. year or two, and I just kind of do what I feel. I don't. Have you had to pull back? Because of the uh, the climate on social and the sensitivity that people in are displaying. A, in a way, um, I'm always conscious when I talk about anything or make a joke about anything that people are going to perceive as political. I'm not saying I don't do the joke. I'm saying it registers in my head of like, oh, yeah, people are probably going to fight in the comments about that. Mm. Even you don't want and you don't want that. I, look, it's it's not my goal. It, it can't. It, look, I can't have this contradictory goal of like I want to help people and I want people to kick each other's ass in the comments. Like th that doesn't work. Right? Is that why you wore a MAGA hat without the words on it? That's ex yeah. It's exactly <laughs> why. I, I, this is my ghost MAGA hat. Oh, no. <laughs> exactly. Well, you also always your your brand was always at least a little. I mean, you you did big booty bitches on on a video in 2010. You were never a PG, you know, creator, were you? 
No, but like that's not that edgy. No, I know that, like, but at least come on. no, but at least it gives you a platform to stand on when you're like he was making at one point content for kids, and so when he oh, started yeah. talking, when he started swearing, or you know what I'm saying. So like you set the bar, yeah, to a point where you don't really have to be super right. PG. And I, I I don't I don't make content for kids, right. and all I can do is be myself, and myself will say things like big booty bitches or Facts. whatever. When did ten you, years how, ago, how old were you when you started YouTube? 20, 24, 25? Probably 24, 25. So maybe? you were you were already like an adult. Yeah. You knew who you were. I think a uh, lot of that's debatable, but I was definitely an adult. <laughs> I, I was I was figuring it out like everyone else. Yeah. I guess I guess the point I'm trying to make is like uh I I definitely went through a phase where I started YouTube at what, twenty one? Jake started at nineteen. And so we were kids. We still are fucking kids. But the content especially resonated that and uh, it was a mirror for who we were and it was just like childish childish immature shit so well, growing up online growing up online and like finding out who you are while having to appease an audience who's telling you who they think you are is yeah. is uh yeah. is a is a phenomenon that a lot of young creators a lot of celebrities too i mean we see it with every single young young hollywood actor that goes through it and um you were 21 yeah can you imagine being siwa growing up online <sighs> jojo I believe in you. I know she's gonna make it out of it. I I know she is, dude. Jojo's the goat. Can He's make, like, who the fuck are you talking? Jojo, right you know Jojo Siwa. Come on. I I, I don't. Do you, not, you, you don't watch uh you don't watch like anyone. I, sorry, I researched this podcast and I was like, oh, it's been a while since I watched something. Which episode did you pick? Did you even watch any? Of it? I saw. Oh, uh, I I saw two of them. I saw one oh, and you fuck. had um. No, they were they were great. There's a reason why I said yes. Uh, to come on, but you yes. had Ben Shapiro on. Oh, yes. Who, who I, I, I don't care about his politics. I just love Ben as a character. Same. Same. Yeah. Like he's, he's just so, Both of us, he's yep. so funny to watch. Uh, yeah. It's all the Democrats fault. <laughs> facts, don't, <laughs> facts don't care about your feelings. feelings yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like he's that guy. And, and uh, coincidentally enough, uh, about two weeks ago, I had this voice acting gig and they were like, can you do a Ben Shapiro? It's like, yeah, I can try. So I had to, I had to, they don't want me like talking about it too much. So I can't give it too much away, but I had to rap a comedy rap as, as ben, Shapiro? ben Shapiro. So again, the producers probably won't be saying any more than that, but at no, some point a Ben Shapiro rap is Amazing. coming out. Amazing. That's yeah. incredible. Dude, I, um, <laughs> I was going to pick up some records. I, I had bought a record player recently and I was in, I think it was in like Sherman Oaks or something. I was walking down the street and Ben Shapiro comes out of a restaurant <laughs> randomly after being on our podcast. He's like, What's up? How you doing? And so uh, he doesn't sound like that. Magically, he has the same voice as my <laughs> yeah, mom, as weird, Robin. He's Mickey Robin. Mouse all Born. of a sudden. I don't. Born. Uh, uh, thank you, Danny. And um, just like uh, someone saw me at a casino in Vegas the other day, and they, they tweeted like, "Yo, know, Logan Paul is like the most normal, normal looking dude." Just like walking around the casino when, when Ben Shapiro is not like on, not doing a podcast, not talking about politics, and he's holding his kid outside of a restaurant, just having a conversation. Yeah. dude, he's the happiest, go lucky, jovial yeah. son of a bitch I've ever seen in my life. You it was, know, it was a okay. uh, no, it was, it was cool. It's it cool to see on camera personality, and then these people off camera because there is a massive difference sometimes yeah you know this guy from uh the young turks the uh, I, I do Cenk? not yeah that's the one I, i'll, I'll oh, look but, but, but you know who i'm talking or you know who i'm see. talking about uh, is he's he the, the main is guy he the thick, the thick he's, one yeah he's the guy yeah. he's the guy you would recognize yes i know him but i i've had lunch with him on a couple of occasions <clears throat> for several different reasons and as political as he is on his show we never talked about politics it just never came up yep. and had conversations about anything else <laughs> And I, if I didn't know that that's the kind of show he does, I would never peg him as political. Yeah. And he's also like a really great dude. Like he's a really cool guy to sit down and have lunch with. Yeah. It's nuts how much he just like turn it off. Agree. So, dude, I, I actually, your girlfriend, David and I were talking. I do not consider the girl I, can we say her name or no? Can we, you just, should we call her Stephanie? Oh yeah. Give her the fake name. An arbitrary yeah, yeah, name yeah, of yeah, Stephanie. Yeah. yeah. Mike's girlfriend, her real name, let's say Stephanie. Uh, is also the number one porn star in the world, Lana Rhodes. Yeah. Stephanie is not Lana Rhodes. They are just, they are two different people. I refuse to believe they're the same person, dude. Lana Rhodes doesn't even really exist anymore. Mm. That character's kind of gone. No, I saw her at the strip club, dude. She, oh yeah, she yeah, turns it back on for yeah, dances. But I, I mean, it. she hasn't shot a, an adult scene obviously in years, what and so heck? she's completely different. Now. Is this a bit, or are you actually, are you actually, your girlfriend's actually a porn star? The number, one, number one porn star in the world. Yeah. But she just doesn't do porn anymore. She stopped. Oh, she's ex-porn star. Yeah, yeah. but Who? she's still number one. Lana Rhodes. Who ranks porn uh -oh. stars? Pornhub. Your dick. Yeah, and search, search, searches. Yeah. Pornhub search. Okay. 
I mean, also, there's like a war, like an award. Like, the oh, yeah, she's they, gotten they get awards. They get awards. Best blowjob. Just, best, just based best on my boobies. dating her, I trended number one on porno a couple weeks ago. I've never made a video before. I have made a ton of videos. I've just never put any public. Your parents must be so proud. Oh, they're happy as fuck. My mom, my mom's <laughs> meeting her probably as this episode rolls. She'll yes. be meeting her. That's, That's great. Yeah. Oh, and, uh, no, sorry. Mon Monday. Next did, they, did they have any objections to it or anything Absolutely like that? Absolutely not. No? I'm, I'm, a, I'm a ex heroin user, fucking psychopath. Oh, they're just happy no, they're you met someone you like. No, no, no. They're happy I'm not dead. alive, dude. Okay, we'll start there. <laughs> They're like, yo, there. if you're alive and you're not selling or using drugs, you are a fucking, uh, it's like a, a miracle. Yeah. That's great, man. Literally. And by the way, congrats on your recovery, man. Thank that's you. That's, that's incredible. You. Yeah, so you're years. completely sober. I, right years. now, yeah. I'm com so I, I, I don't mean right in this moment. No, no, so I started, <laughs> Obviously, you're high now. I'm talking about in general. <laughs> uh, I started I started drinking a little bit about a couple of years ago, and I realized that, that was there was no issue with it. It just wasn't for me. I don't like it that much. So now I'm completely and utterly sober. And by the way, Stephanie- is it is amazing. She's amazing. I mean, she just, you know, she went through a little phase and she she made enough money to buy multiple exotic cars and multiple houses in multiple states and did her thing. She's a hustler, but she's also just a sweet girl. And, you know, we've all gotten to know her and she's super down to earth and great to all of yeah, us. She's and, fucking awesome, dude. Yeah. And how long how long you guys been together? Not very long. Not Co very long? Just a couple months. Listen, do you know how they met? Oh, go ahead. Then I'm down to listen. No, no, no. <laughs> Your story's going to be way more interesting than mine. Not, not really. no, this I, one might be, actually. I, I just, I, I, found her because i mike had his uh fascination affinity whatever you want to call it with with adult film stars and she's the number one in the world she's young she's gorgeous and for his birthday i surprised him with her that's how they got introduced for one of my vlogs a piece of content blindfolded me i turned around oh. i thought it was going to be like a, a trip or some car or something like that and there was lana road standing behind me and so i said oh wow what the fuck and we we hung out for an hour for the vlog yeah. but then that night we hung out again and then we hung out again we went to his brother's fight in miami and it kind of <laughs> turned into a thing it blossomed so, yeah. so you, you for your his birthday you got your boy a girlfriend his girlfriend yes. facts yes and so now he wants Man. me to return the favor for his birthday and, and by the way i'm fucking pissed he has it <laughs> no i guess i can't be because my birthday hasn't come yeah. yet you gotta get on it but what were you gonna say fuck well okay li listen listen to my love story so i've been uh, i've been dating kelly for four years cool. we, we live together cool. but we bought a house together and all that so we're like definitely in that zone so I'm about to, I'm about to get engaged. Actually, I haven't talked about that publicly. Wait, I was about so. to say, you say that. Yeah. Say that. Yeah, yeah. No, no. We 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 talk about everything. So oh, okay. so she we we plan it all together and all that. Um, but no, I haven't talked about it before with anyone. Wait, wait. I typed uh, in. Well, not with anyone, but with publicly. So wait, 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 now wait. to get on the stage. I typed in Ray William Johnson girlfriend. Did you date Anna Akana? Uh, yeah, like eight years ago. You <laughs> did? Yeah. Anyway, my story's oh, better sorry. than that. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Is is it the is it the redhead? I, I try, is that her? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, can you get all the rest of the pictures off the screen, please? Yeah, y'all are a beautiful couple. Uh, I'll do this. There so, so, uh, yeah, no, it's it's not. I'm not petty like that. It's, it's like not a big deal. All his exes. It's not a big deal. <laughs> Just hanging out. No, I, uh, baby, I swear to God, I never had an ex before you. I swear. Oh, I'm so sorry. He's like, was that Jenna Marble? Wait, what the hell? <laughs> Who haven't you did? Uh, so anyway, so I, I'm about to get engaged, right? Damn. And we got it. I've got this all planned out. Um, I'm supposed to give a TED talk in um, Belgium in about three weeks. Okay, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Holy shit! But I get invited to do this TED talk, and I'm like, this is this is awesome. This is like I I can't because I love being on stage. I did stand up for a long time, and this is gonna be great. And I thought, oh, okay, so I will take Kelly with me and I'll give the TED Talk and then we'll spend two weeks and we'll travel around Europe and then we'll end in Paris and then I'll take her to Paris Disneyland because she loves Disneyland and then I'll be a total cliche and under the Eiffel Tower, I'll propose yes. and it'll be great. And I, you know, I, I sort of walked her through it and talked and she's like, this is amazing, this is a, a huge dream and it was all ruined. Because you told her, probably. Because I think the, you're supposed to wait and actually just do it. I don't know if you know that. Actually, <laughs> it was because of the coronavirus. Oh, you're lying! But you're close. Oh, no! No, 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 we don't that's have a, it. Wait, no. no, that's a joke. Oh, okay. <clears throat> the coronavirus did not ruin your... Yes, it did. I'm not going to sit on a plane oh, for 12 no. hours. Because I, I'm not worried about necessarily about getting it because our demographic survives it. It's I don't want to be quarantined in a foreign country <laughs> oh, for shit. two months. Dude, propose during quarantine. That's a better story that's than some Eiffel Tower... Sh 
That'll I, go viral. I totally vlog it. Yes, in a hazmat suit. Yeah. Yes, dude, that'll go viral twice. One because you have the coronavirus, and also because it'll go viral <laughs> online. I don't know if you know this. It's not my. It's not my goal to go viral with my engagement. Yeah. Like I don't think I don't know if I'm gonna film it or anything like that. Like I, <laughs> I wanted it to be something awesome for her, you know, and for me. So like a and, real human type of thing. Yeah, like an <laughs> yeah. actual live human being who gives a shit about his partner. I'm not sure. I'm not sure I understand what, yeah, what you're saying. Yeah, but what I is think this I hear human you. thing you talk about? Not Does filming. Not compute. What? Yeah, and so like all of it, all of it's completely ruined. It Some sucks. Others. I actually haven't canceled my um, my TED talk yet, so I should probably get on that before wow. this comes out. And they're like, "Oh yeah, we learned that you canceled." On this, some this is about Thursday. You got four days. Does COVID nineteen ruin your engagement? That's crazy. It did, and I'm gonna wait for it to pass before we like I don't know try and do it all again. Good luck, dude. The stock market like hits zero. What? It, it uh, lost, yeah, it lost we, like we flat tank today, but I think about eighteen hundred points. Yeah, set off a level one circuit break for a trading halt because Nasdaq dropped by seven percent, which automatically triggers a circuit halt. And then the second one's at thirty. It's crazy. What crazy if this out. shit really does get real bad and somehow turns into some uh, zombie apocalypse type situation, mm-hmm. and you never end up proposing because you got you became a zombie? Yeah, is that how do you feel about the fact that you're a zombie? I like how you how you were like, and you never end up proposing. Because you became a zombie. As if the proposing part would be the worst part of that scenario. <laughs> I mean, would you, put, I, oh, you it'll propose happen. as a zombie? You it'll could, happen. A zombie, like, a zombie wedding? That's a great fucking movie. Yeah. Zombie wedding. Write it. Can yeah, you write I, I, I that wish. If um, you could join up with any influencer, would it be Logan for the zombie apocalypse or no? I don't know, man. What kind of uh, resources you got? They're strong, endless. Well, you gotta. You live in a gated. We need to. We need to bear. Oh no! This don't even want this. Ain't the we're out. We're out. This full, ain't it. Full retreat spot. We have a full retreat. Okay. Location. Yeah. Then all right. Then uh, then I'm on your team. Let me ask you a question. Go ahead. I'm looking at this picture, dude. Looking at you now in real life, man. We talked about the skin that you have. Yeah. And how it's it's it's, it's awesome. You're a great looking guy. Great looking girl. Happy couple. Smart guy. Driven. Charismatic. Thank you. Savvy. Helps others. I believe. You may have a duty to have a child, even though you don't want one. <laughs> You're the dude. I mean, there's a lot of idiots out there I know. mass reproducing, which is why he doesn't want to have one. No, because I have this conversation with Spencer too. Spencer, then they have to play with the idiots. Spencer, Spencer doesn't want Spencer? doesn't want to have. He, he's he's in Hawaii walking around barefoot, and he doesn't want to have a kid. But he's him and Angel are amazing. Like he is the the person who should be reproducing and replenishing our planet with more humans. Like the good ones. The good ones, right? But literally, Johnson. like I said, he's not re- reproducing because all the idiots are. He's like, I don't want my, I don't want a fucking spawn of mine hanging out with all these well, m- muppets. Then it'll be my goal to help all those idiots not be. Yeah, there you so go. So much of an idiot. But I don't. I wouldn't be a good parent because I don't want to be a parent. Boom. Period. Nice. It, it makes so much sense. Yeah. It really does. I, I yeah, and I, I, I don't have a problem with kids. Kids are cool and they're fun. I just that's not my thing, man. I'm I like cats. Do you have cats? I have three cats. Nice. We talked about Jeffrey Katzenberg earlier. So. Right. That piqued my interest immediately. You want to talk about Quibi? <laughs> Maker Studios. Cable Monopolies. Oh, okay. Are uh, we supposed to do division with that? Yeah, is what one, is that? Is that one divided Maker, by the, Maker Studios divided by cable, cable Monopolies. monopolies. Yeah, do you well, have an answer? Well, no? those are two different things. Like, <laughs> well, Those are two different things. Which one do you want me to... I would start with this and then... Maker Studios, that. dude. So Maker Studios was a company that I worked with um, a long time ago that helped me produce some stuff. Uh, right. They helped me produce like a few shows. They helped me produce uh, a bunch of animated stuff. It was doing animation for a long time. Um, and we had we had a falling out when they got bought and were transitioning from being a small production company to being owned by Time Warner. And then later they were bought out, completely bought out um, by Disney. Disney right? But yeah. when they were going to Time Warner, when Time Warner bought like a majority of the shares, what happened was, I think it was Time Warner. I don't want to get that wrong. But what happened was basically, uh, and I'm obviously paraphrasing this whole thing and glossing over it, but basically Time Warner tells Maker, you know, they start looking under the hood and they go, oh, you have all of these uh, all of these social media influencers under these contracts, but you don't own any of their content, right? Like it, you might be signed with yep. some, but I don't know if they own Impulsive. No, no. Or, right. So Time Warner, who's old school, looked at that and they were like, well, you, well, you got to own the, the content. They want the IP. They want the IP. Facts. And so Maker came to me, again paraphrasing, and they were like, "Hey man, you gotta you gotta sign over the IP to you know or at least part of it to Equals Three, and they already owned half the um, half the IP." Fuck, I'm going through puberty over That's here. That's all right, man. <laughs> <laughs> happens to everybody. Yeah, right. So um, 
they they wanted anyway uh, they already owned half of the animation stuff but they wanted half of the equals three stuff and i was like well give me a con so no but like give me a contract and i'll look at it so they gave me a contract and the contract was awful like it was we want it was more or less we want everything we're not offering you anything this is what like 2012 this was 20 yeah 2012 i think they were the shit I mean, they, Maker was was that was the biggest player, right? Yeah, the they game? were. They were. I think they were the biggest. And player. so and most of the big. most of the contracts that they were serving to people, people were just signing. You you said no. Yeah, I said no because it was stupid. And then I handed over to my lawyer, and I'm like, "What do you th- back me up on this? What do you think?" And he's like, "That's stupid. If you showed that contract to a hundred people on the street, they would say no because mm-hmm. they're asking for everything and not giving anything, which is not a big deal. I get offered things all the time, and I go no because it's not. It's not." You know, that's not in my best interest. But what the problem was is they were helping me produce these things and they their um, CEO, who was, you know, a lot younger than he, he's probably in his 40s now. He's in his 30s then. But he was kind of a hothead and he was kind of a, a bro. And he was then he started trying to str- uh, strong arm me. He was basically like, hey, man, if if, <laughs> if you don't sign this, we're going to break your fucking knees. We're going <laughs> to. W- well, we're going to cut off <laughs> your we're legs. Gonna, we're going to cut off like. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Like, like once your legs gone. Dude. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so we're going to cut off production to, to everything that we're working on. Right. So you need to sign this or we're going to shut your shows down. I'm like, well, you can't shut my shows down because <laughs> you don't, one of them you don't own at all. Right. And if you shut the other one down, it's just going to hurt you. And, uh, and I didn't believe, I was like, whatever, you're not going to do that. And then they did. Then oh they shut God. down production. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, no, they did. They called, they called my bluff and I was like, oh my God. So I had to start filming out of my house, like, so that I wouldn't miss an episode or whatever. And I was like, all right. Cause I don't, I don't get into drama and I don't, I especially don't fight publicly cause I don't get into the thing where I'm like, oh, I'm so mad at him and I want everyone to see us you know, fight it out on, that's, that's, that's not my thing. Live on the zone. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> that, that, that's not my thing, right? So I didn't say anything. I was like, all right, just, just whatever. They, they are dicks and move on and, and do your own thing. You'll be fine. You've always been a self-starter. You'll, you'll keep going. But then the CEO, I don't know why he did it. I think he did it just to be a dick, but he put out a press statement that basically said, we uh, dropped Ray from our roster. What the fuck? And it made me look really bad. Not not that I quit and left, which I did, but basically that they severed ties with me because they were, I think, trying to jump out in front of the story. And so immediately my social media is blowing up with like, oh, why did they drop you? Uh, what did you do wrong? And all this stuff. And I was like, all right, so I at least need to put my story out there. So I wrote an op-ed and I'm a pretty good writer. Like if I hadn't gone into other forms of entertainment, I probably would have written. Mm. So I write an op-ed and I give it to like the only blog that I know of. And I don't even know if that blog's still around, nor do I remember the name, but I just remember having a contact with someone. So I give this blog, I'm like, hey man, will you publish this? And anyone who searches my name can see the, the, real, the real story. And I said, in fact, here's a copy of that contract that they offered me and you can put it right next to it so Ooh. that people will know I'm not full of shit. But I don't know if anyone's going to find it. And he put it up and it went viral like within a few hours. Wow. Like everyone is sharing it because it made them look really bad. At least everyone in my bubble was sharing it and it made them look really bad. Well, then um, the CEO, the hothead like reads it and he, he texts me and he says something along the lines of I'm uh, breaking both your ankles. He with sa- a bat. He's like, you're going to die, bitch. <laughs> uh, something like you're going to die, bitch. This is war. Something Wait, like that. Now you're being serious. I swear to God. I so he's actually God. coming for your it legs. Was, yeah. It was like, okay. like you're going to die. It was some kind of threat, like in text. <gasps> And I was like, I can't believe, I can't believe this just escalated to Whoa. this threat. And so I screen capped that and tweeted it out. Oh my God. It is war. Now it's, right. holy So shit. then the, then the media media, like the, not just the. Eddie Hearn, Joe Markowski. <laughs> 10 ounce gloves, no mouth guard, <laughs> no head gear. The media media picked up on that and they were like. Wait a minute. This company that Comcast or Time Warner now owns, the CEO is death threat. Yeah, is threatening this guy. Um, and then they all hit me up for a statement, and I was like, I I do not do this. This is not my thing. So I'm not giving you any state. Everything that I have wanted to say, I said it in my op-ed, and then I showed you the the threatening text, and I'm not going beyond that. Class, right? <laughs> But and and I, and I kind of wanted the uh, the guy to be the CEO to be shamed for it because it was not cool. Like you're you're in a you're in a position where you you can't do that shit. Mm. And also, don't threaten people in writing, dumbass. You idiot. <laughs> so anyway, 
You got to uh, send those threats by carrier pigeon, dude. Well, I've known that for exactly. my whole fucking life. You got to raise bro. up your window and scream your head off. <laughs> but as long as a carrier pigeon doesn't have it in writing, it needs to be a parrot who can regurgitate <laughs> or, I mean, what you said and tell him he's going to die, bitch. Can, exactly. can and string has worked as well, but same same well, point. Same uh, point. I, I think a few months after that, he got fired <laughs> for that. I would uh, assume like, so. Like, the, the when you board. start death threatening, you're, yeah. you're yeah, yeah. usually uh, like not... Your, your top talent or whatever. Like I think like the board kicked him off and I think he's doing fine now. Like He started another company and he started I, a new mob <laughs> squad of killers i saw him in a meeting a couple of years ago and he like we didn't talk about it but it it seemed fine like it was okay and i'm like all right cool he's he's grown up and yeah all that uh so it's all good but look man it was a it was a big company and he grew it from nothing to to being you know Mass. sold by fucking at, disney dude yeah, yeah to being sold to disney so yeah. it was like it was like his baby i'm sure and he didn't he didn't want um it to look bad and, and all that i don't know why i'm making excuses for him yeah i was gonna say that <laughs> interesting all right i didn't i didn't so know it was like that that's the that's the sort of maker studios uh story and i don't i don't like i know people uh back in the day were like yeah you hate makers like no everyone i met that i that worked there i thought was really great yeah i got into the fight with the head guy everyone else was really cool uh, are you still tight with any of the uh og youtubers or any anyone now um that we may have seen online um i don't think so were you i don't think i was ever tight with any of them. oh this guy um you know lloyd uh from epic rap yes of course yeah oh so my god the best yeah lloyd's my boy the best Is, he's the tall one or shorter one he's a shorter he, one, right? he's, he has he has other um you know physical characteristics but yes he is shorter than the other one so you're telling me he's <laughs> so he you're telling me he has more physical than characters just than just being short or no yeah he definitely i would say he's got more going on than that he's a really talented guy uh Is, I, he's the talented one the, no, do you, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. Just a quick determinant. He's the one on the left. He's fucking amazing. This one, right? Yeah. He yells. Yeah, Lord. Well, because this one's really tall. Yes. How tall? Ah, oh, shit. I don't know. No, we need a height. Six, some seven foot nine. Is that's, he that, that tall? tall? Yeah, that's yeah, lurch. That's, that's yeah. He, he, he gave up an NCAA career to go do comedy <sighs> music. So, 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 you're tight. You're tight with uh with Lloyd. I'll, yeah, I'm. I'm great. Well, I just had dinner with him a while back. Oh, very cool. But I look to be I say tight with Lloyd. Honestly, I'm not. I don't. I don't. I don't want to say I don't have a lot of friends. Um, but I don't. Ha I don't hang out for the sake of hanging out that often. Yeah, we. Uh, we us you either. know what I'm saying? Us either. Everyone we like lives in this house. Uh, that's a joke. <laughs> that's a fucking. You joke. just I mean, move them in. I mean, to an extent. It's hey, not, you want to move in? <laughs> it, it is very hard to hang out. I have a hard time uh, kicking it. With right, kicking it back with the boys. I'm either working yeah. or kicking it with my boys. Do you boo do you booze or, or any of that shit? Like, do you not, drink it not, all? Not really. That's like the that's like the oil to hanging out. Yeah, boozing and, and drugs are like the oil to hanging out. People, when you're sober and all you're trying to do is build businesses, hanging out is the biggest fucking detriment ever. Like, you want to do what? You want to go see a movie? Yeah. How the fuck am I gonna monetize that? Yeah, and what are it's we not gonna, even my movie. What are we gonna do during that movie? Yeah, what <laughs> I can I bring my laptop in? Can I answer emails? Like what am I do they have Wi Fi? Yeah, least? it's 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 sort of a weird I don't know, I don't think I was always like that. I think it developed over time where you just work so much. <laughs> and there's like a there's like a, a, a sort of an accomplishment factor when you're working, and then when you go hang out with someone, you're like, Where's that accomplishment oh factor? My God, yeah. Where did it go? Yeah. This feels so weird. That's why that's why like doing certain things helps. Like you go to hang out with someone to like do those painting painting classes where you like paint something together. At least you've done oh, something. Oh, oh yeah, Acti activities, activities to foster uh, a friendship. Yeah. That that works. Versus like, you know, the people that you you want to hang out that means like go sit on their couch and throw back 40 ounces or fucking PBRs or some shit. Are you are you asking me to take a painting class with you, Mike? Yes. As happening? a matter of fact, yes I am. I'd like that, guys. All I'd the like three that. Of us. I'd like that for Were you all hanging all on your us. fridge, Logan? I'd hang it right next to that one. That's some art I made. See, ladies and gentlemen, his fridge is right there because literally <laughs> that is his kitchen. And I don't know if you know this, but at night, um, Spencer sleeps right here. He used right to. here in this place. Back in the day, just he pull did. up a sleeping bag right, right. No, but we've had, I've had sex right here. Oh, that's good. Yeah, it was. That's where, good. where? On the counter, yeah? Yeah, right here. And, and right there. That's she good. got rug burns though because it was on the carpet. Yeah. Uh, she, I used and, by sex. the way, that's her fault. She was going too hard. I told her to chill. Who's that again? Full name? Uh, uh, you Just know, so you, I can... Uh, yeah, you know I can't, you know I can't uh. do that particular one. <laughs> I don't know. I have class. I'm not going to reveal all this too much, too much information. God damn it. Well, we just exploit the shit out of our lives. And I really do wonder when it's going to stop. Like the fact that you said you want to do a real human marriage and not have it on camera. Like I commend you. That's awesome. 
Well, it doesn't <laughs> seem so obvious. I know, but also like, what a great piece of content. No, <laughs> snap out of it, Logan. <laughs> you can do that. Look, look, people do that all the time. You can do that if you want. I just, it, I, I might do it. I might not. I don't think I will. It doesn't benefit me or anyone else in in any way for me to like vlog the whole thing. Why I why I started capturing anything on video was because I love the fact that you will. It is a moment preserved in time forever. Yeah, that's true. Right. So. It's this double-edged sword of living in the moment, but also the moment moments are fucking fleeting, dude. I, I don't know what happened five seconds ago. I cannot right. paint the picture for you. I can go here, though. I can go right there and look at it. So this is a, a class. This is such a big argument right massive, now in our, tar, in our day and age. It's like, do you want to record your grandma's last birthday, happy birthday cake moment? Do you want to record it and watch it back? Or do you want to live it with her? Right. So that she lives it with you and you live it with her? Or do you want to be standing there like, that's right, Grandma. You look great on the screen. And she's like, are you going to fucking sing the happy birthday or are you just going to look at me on your phone? Wow. It's a big fucking question. It is the to be or not to be of our generation. <laughs> do you want to live or do you want to film? To film or not to film. That's it. And it's a big question and for That is you. our That's Hamlet a, for sure. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> especially, especially with your prearranged engagement that you've already run through multiple times with all the specs and everything. <laughs> yeah. She's like, I, you said 126. We'd be on It's a Small World After All. What is the holdup? <laughs> Why are we still standing here? She knows the whole thing. Because I got a respiratory infection, goddammit. I got coronavirus. Come on. Damn. God, it ruined so much for me. I'm still bit. I'm so bitter about it. That's why I had to come on this podcast and talk about it. Piss me off. Are you uh, on the TikTok? I'm not. No? What but are your you, ad you adapted to Facebook. So I'm, I'm 38, so I'm probably 36 years old. 36 years how, too how old does to that be work? on TikTok. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I'm 38, you're, you're so right. I'm probably 36. Yeah, probably 30. Yeah, he's exactly. 35. Exactly. Despises TikTok. I'm even. I'm even 24, dude. I found myself lip syncing at TikTok yesterday, and I'm like, "What the fuck am I?" You're not the doing? only influencer to, to, to say I. I buddy with a guy who rubs elbow, who works with a bunch of influencers, yeah. and he's like, they, any anyone over 18 who makes content for it, like any influencer who feels like they have to do it, they all complain about it because they're like, man, I'm, I, I got a college degree and I'm over here lip syncing to fucking Taylor Swift. <sighs> yeah. This is ridiculous. If you can make a, if, if, if you can make a TikTok like truthfully really funny and if, if I can find that spark that made me start doing vines and like that creativity and I like the product, it, it like I made two yesterday that are actually Amazing. awesome. Amazing. And I, I watch them and I'm actually going to post it when I post it on Twitter, the caption is going to be, I think something like, Wow, I made a TikTok and I actually don't hate this one. So if you if, if you can if you can adapt it to again, just believe it or not, make you happy, you'll probably be all right. Yeah, no, no, of course. And at some point I might, but I just don't. That demo is so young. So young. So young for me. So young. And maybe when they grow up. Also, you know, this argument could have been made two years ago for Snapchat. And I didn't really do the Snapchat thing. And then it kind of stuck around. Yeah, and, and it, it kind of went away. And so yeah. TikTok, that could be the case for TikTok. Maybe not. Who knows? It could be the next big thing. But I I'll just, tell you this much, in two years, it's going to be a completely different one. There'll be a new one. And we'll be like, have you been on, what, you know, Shablam? No, Shablam. Quibi. Quibi. Have you been on, do you have a show on Quibi? Do you have a show on Quibi? If you're, if you're on Quibi as a creator, are you a quiver? <laughs> Nobody <laughs> likes a quiver. Quivering? I'm a quiver. Is she a quiver? Is Reese Witherspoon a, a quiver? Who else? Who have else? you seen Reese without her spoon ever? Quiver. <laughs> God. That, that easily, and it could have flown so far under the radar. <laughs> and I hope someone else heard it besides me, but I caught it last second. It I, just I, was I, a fucking incredible. I didn't hear what happened. <laughs> no, nope, nope, I think you have to go back and watch it. Okay. Just, it, hey, shake my hand. <laughs> that was, I still, that was great. That uh, was real. Did you hear it? <sighs> it's just Reese Witherspoon, bro. Check it out. This is Reese Witherspoon, and this is Reese without a spoon. Uh, that's pretty clever. I, I know. I, I'm sorry. There's just certain things I just can't. This is a lot for me, dude. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, that, one, that one was tricky. That one was tricky. Dad jokes. I know. Dude, I love dad jokes. Oh, yeah. Want to hear my favorite one? I told it on two podcasts ago. If you take the filter out of a vacuum cleaner, give it a good scrub, you You're become the vacuum, the vacuum cleaner. Yeah, yeah. 
are you too smart for dad jokes? You can predict the outcome. No, it's because he'll never be a dad. There you oh. go. Uh, look, first of all, that's not a really high bar that you're <laughs> setting there. Are you too smart for dad? No, you can just you see it coming from a mile away. Yeah. I mean, come on. Like as a as a person who has spent a lot of time writing jokes, you you see them coming. Let's play a game. What we got? It's called Nazi Yahtzee. What? Oh, Yahtzee. Okay. There goes the monetization. It was, it was a callback. <laughs> My ears are sweating. Right. No, it happens to all of us. Yeah, it does. Trust me. This game is called First Word with Ray William Johnson. I was going to clap again. I'm not going <laughs> to. We have a list of creators, and we want you to say the first word that comes to your mind. And I, I think you'll what? know these ones. A list of creators. That's right. Like internet creators. Yep. What's the first word for that guy? Oh, do I? Okay. So yeah. I have to look up here and... Yes. Oh, okay. I didn't know the rules. First word, but with is cut off. So first word, if Ray William Johnson. <laughs> here we go. Vith. Oh. Lumberjack? <laughs> uh, son of a lumberjack. <laughs> <laughs> so, Wait, his mustache in that one. I, kind of... I hope there's not inside <laughs> jokes that I'm no, stepping no, on. No. Oh, I like her. She's great. Um, uh, sweet Sweetheart. Yes. Uh, wants to marry into the lumberjack family, but can't. <laughs> they just can't. They'll never get accepted from the dad. Sorry. Ugh. Uh, clean cut? Yeah. I'm, just, I'm going for hairstyles yep, here. Yep, yep. All right. Oh, no. Oh, why? Always. Oh. Um, broke Adam Sandler? Oh! <laughs> no? You had to do one word. Broke? Oh. How much is broke? <laughs> <laughs> okay, one word, water boy. Nice. Yeah. nice. That was awesome. Thank you, Ray. Uh, Raymond, Raymond. I think that's, I think. Oh, that's, that was it? Yeah. That's okay. All you got. crushed it. That's, sorry. I don't, sorry, I don't, I don't recognize a lot of the, the people there. That's actually fascinating. That David Dobrik to you is just a person that will never be a lumberjack. Yeah. That's all he is to you. He's the world's biggest creator. I mean, I'm sure he's got, got I'm sure he's a great person. I, I don't. I'm sure. <laughs> sorry. I'm sure he could probably hack away some some logs too. Oh, David, yeah, probably chop chop the I, shit out of some logs. Uh, 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 again, I, I don't. I know how offended internet influencers get when you these don't ones know won't. Who they are. These okay. ones won't. I feel Good. like I feel like I feel like it's the ones who almost and could be <clears throat> great and like top tier that get offended. Because they're still in like that phase where you maybe have to put on an ego to embody the role of what it means to be they're an in influencer. The they're in the fake it part of the fake it till you make it Exactly. Phase. And th these ones all have made it, but they don't give a fuck. Okay. I mean, they're all doing their thing. I think it's because they're in a bubble, to be honest I with mean, you. that too. I think that they're too. surrounded by people who know them and, and like them and, and give them shit and treat them a certain way. And then suddenly they step out of the bubble. And it's like, oh, no, I maybe I've seen you. I'm not really sure. I don't really watch. And they're like, oh, but this is bullshit. Yeah. I can't believe... Oh, you haven't seen my toy unboxing podcast? <laughs> I'm Ryan's toy time. It's one podcast, one whole podcast dedicated to one toy, and that is us. Yeah. You haven't seen it? No. Do you no think, sorry. I'm, I'm so sorry. I, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Do you think part of the reason why they uh, are as big as they are is because they wouldn't get offended or don't get offended when people don't know who they are? Like, yeah. they don't get offended oh, by sure. shit so for easily? Sure. Because if, how much does thick skin contribute to uh, overall success on the internet? I mean, it's it's everything. That's that's part of what my um, that's part of what my TED talk was going to be about was dealing with fear of judgment. Mm, nice and and so like important. everyone naturally has a fear of of judgment to some degree. It's like we're hardwired for it, and I can get into the science of it, but I don't have to. But we're, everyone's naturally hardwired for that. So when it takes a special kind of crazy to put yourself in a position where you're on stage or you're on camera and you're you're in a situation where more people are going to judge you openly <laughs> than they would uh, in a normal scenario. And it, it yeah, you got to be a little nuts to sort of want that, right? To bring it upon yourself. Right, to yeah. bring it upon yourself yeah. and then to have to deal with it and then put that face on of like, okay, I'm, th this is fine. Like, it, you know, it, <laughs> Uh, one person said they hate me today and that's not going to ruin my day. You know how like, yep. you know, you have those days and then you read that one comment and you're like, oh, fuck, fuck. kill that guy. Yeah. I, yeah. You know, like it just ruins <laughs> yeah. every, it, it doesn't matter if 19 people told you you're amazing. You get that one at that right time and it, oh, it like destroys your soul. I know so much. I'll tell you, so I, I'll give you this rule of mine. It probably wouldn't work for you. Um, but it works for me. It probably wouldn't work for you because uh, I think the style of content that you do, mm -hmm. which is more involved in the influencer scene. Got it. But, um, so 10, about 10 years ago, 
I watched a, there was like a video of someone sent to me and it was about me and I watched it and it was a fan. And I want to say it was, you know, some young girl and she was like, Ray's amazing. He's the most amazing person in the world. He's so funny. And I was like, oh, that's sweet. Oh, good for her. Gave it a like and maybe a comment or whatever. And then I watched another one and it was some guy and he was like, Ray's the biggest piece of shit. I, if I ever saw him, I'd punch him right in the dick. Oh. And I, I, and, and it was like, um, it wasn't just that. It was like saying things that I had done that I was like, I, I didn't do that. That yeah. wasn't me. Yeah. Um, which is another rule you learn as an influencer. If people can't find shit about you, they'll just make it up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a lot of fun. But anyway, so I watched these two videos back to back. And this was, I, 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 believe, I was still living in New York, so I believe it was 2010. And I said, I am never going to watch a video about myself again. And I swear to God, I have not. Nice. I swear to God. Nice. If, if, if someone sends me a video and says they talk about you, I don't watch it. If my name's in the title, I don't watch it. Even if I think it's positive. Will you watch I this? I do not watch it. I will watch this because I'm involved yes. in it, right? Yeah, yeah. That's a little different. But I don't watch it. And it's not because, you know, I can't deal with hater comments. Actually, psychologically, I think that either of those perspectives in either of those videos aren't healthy. Because no matter what this young girl says... I'm not the most amazing person in the world. Right. And it's not healthy for me to believe that, nor am I the biggest piece of trash in the world. And it's not healthy for anyone to believe that either. And so what happens to these influencers, I think, and why they get these, these weird egos is like you're being pulled in completely polar opposite directions oh, shit. In, in a stage where you're trying to figure out who you are. And, and likely you, you know, you land somewhere on the spectrum of, you know, being awesome to like being a turd sometimes. Yeah. Right. But they're trying to figure out who they are, and some days they believe this group, and some days they believe this group. And yeah. I think it makes them really manic, and it's not good for them. So I st completely stay away from that stuff. And frankly, uh, I I've probably avoided a lot of drama from it, too. Oh, my God. I love that Yeah, theory. what you just said is- I you, think you're spot that on. That was- the, Thank me for coming to your TED Talk. That was incredible. <laughs> that was fucking That's awesome. actually not like, in hey, my thank TED you. Talk. <laughs> That was ri That's really true. I never once thought about it like that in my entire life, but it's so true. Some days you're- the hammer some days you're the nail when it comes to comments and some days you're the funniest guy and some days you're not you know and it that definitely has a, a an effect that going back and forth between turd and uh, amazing yes yeah. as you said yeah and why and like look i'm i i refuse to be a part of the bullshit story that someone tells themselves about me and and no one that knows me i believe has ever like made a video about me because anyone that knows me would call me and be like hey i have a problem with you or whatever so uh i haven't i don't necessarily like lost anything from from missing out on any any of this stuff and occasionally i'll see comments that are like hey this and it, it's like a username like this person like <laughs> Whoever I don't fucking recognize, Bloom but they, Boy, they made it. Yeah, yeah, they made a video about you. You should watch it. It's like no. I'm well, good. I mean, also like the the other question is like, how much at the end of the day do you really give a shit what the audience says about the performer? Like you're the performer. You're the person yeah. that's and and we talked about this the other day. There's two very different approaches. There's either the the person that takes critique takes a lot of that feedback and just swims in it and tries to digest what's pop, pop, like what's constructive. Cause sometimes there's little nuggets of constructive or critique in yeah. there. And then there's people that I, I relate more to that are just like, I don't really give a fuck unless like, in all honesty, like I'm producing the content I want to produce. If you like it, fan fucking task. If you don't go fuck yourself. Like yeah. I don't care. I don't give a fuck. So like, unless you have very specific uh, criticism or critique for me, which we had some on this show recently where it was like, yo, like, pull a little bit back a little bit, let other people, like whatever you have that kind of stuff. Great. I'll listen to it. I'll take it. Yeah. But for the most part, like I don't really, there's a reason why I'm here and there's an audience that's watching or that you're here and there's an audience watching. If they want to create their own content, then they should do that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? As I, opposed I, to telling you all the time, like, yo, you suck, you fucking suck or you're great or whatever. You I, know? Right. There's definitely <laughs> that. I'm, I'd like to consider myself a bit more receptive yeah. to, uh, to, to notes delivered in any fashion. You're sure. big on the delivery, right? It's not what you say. It's how you say it. I, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. It's what you say. I don't care how you say it. If I, if you think watching right now, I'm a piece of shit. Yo, let me know. And by the way, I'll listen. I'll be like, okay, what, <laughs> what did I do? I wonder what I did. For me to be better. When I talk with Gary Vaynerchuk yeah. for our documentary, the Maverick documentary, he <laughs> said, you know, if Sally Pants 9147 leaves a comment that she sucks, like, or you suck, maybe, maybe she's right. Like, why? Why? Why does she think that? Let's see if I can flip her. Because by the end of my life, I would love to flip everyone who's ever said anything negative about me. And instead of 
doing the fuck you I hate, and, and, I hate and banishing them forever. I hate that, I believe, man. I believe I can flip them. I just need a little bit I of time. I hate that, and I, and I would disagree 100% with GV on that one just because... There's a lot of people out there who just want to say, you suck. No yeah. thought, for, no for reason. Sure, for no. sure, for sure, Boom. for sure. But what if, what if the person that is throwing out those mindless, uh, pointless, mean, negative comments could be flipped to being a good, hopeful, optimistic young, young yeah. person I don't know why. because of your content? And no, what no. if they can't? They can't. You it's want a, to know why they can't? just give it up, guys? It's a, it's a fool's errand to, oh, spend, yeah. to spend all of your time trying to flip people's opinions. Uh, I'm not... I'm not the best thing you can do is be the be the the real you, the authentic you, 100%. the best version of you, and hope that they get on board. For sure, but I got yo, I got sixty more years to do that. Like, I'm I'm sure I'll be able to flip some people. I've already flipped people in the past like six months to a year. Yeah, but you do you do that by being like yourself, the you, authentic, yeah, the, the yeah. you that your friends like being around. For sure, that, that version of you. So if they don't like that now, I'm like, all right, like this is the best I got. Well, yeah, if they, if they don't like that, you're not like, man, I'm not good enough. For or I'm sure. not doing it right. It's it's that well, they're just not into me. Yeah, man. for sure, for sure. Some people just don't like the color purple, Absolutely and if you wear agree. purple, they're gonna stick the middle finger yep. in your face. One yep. of my favorite Jay Z quotes: "Only God can judge me, so I'm gone. Either love me or leave me alone. That's it." Either love me or leave me the fuck. Like, I don't care. Like, yeah. either you fuck with me and you like what I do and you like what I produce or just go do something else. Like, I don't, unless you have very specific critique or criticism that can tell me how to do better. If you want to deliver a warm heart, everything I write, when I tell, give Logan a note, it is thought out to a T and I try to do, do the best possible job I can telling him how to do a better job. Right. How you say things. You suck. Does, it helps no one. Right. It helps absolutely no one. Why do you? It doesn't tell why the person sucks. It doesn't tell what you're feeling. It does nothing. What do I do with that? You're a simp. You're a loser. You're what a piece is a of simp, shit. By the way, it's the one thing that's going around. I don't know what. what and it's like somebody that like tries so hard to be with a girl but never hooks up with a girl. Simp. A simple person lacking common yeah. sense. A fool. Today, no, today no. I learned I was a simp for 38 years. <laughs> a man that puts himself in a subservient, submissive position under women in hopes of winning them over without a female bringing anything to the table. I'm sorry, what are you reading? Uh, the Urban, Urban Dictionary. Dictionary. Urban oh. Dictionary definition of sin. <laughs> I like what you said about the the, the, the videos, the, the one praising you and the one showing their disdain for yes. you. Uh, because list- they're going to go in they're going to go in either uh, How many times have you put out a video and every comment is like, "Yeah, Logan Paul, he's all right." Never. never like it never, never. happens. That <laughs> never happens. Not, not, not. No, it's going to be he sucks or he's amazing. Right oh, or yeah. or this other person in this video sucks or they're gonna say something um you know sexually suggestive about the women in the video that's yeah. awful right yeah. but not like none of that I'm not saying none of it can't be helpful maybe yo, yo, it can okay. like what do you comment do? my videos now yeah yo you you are right. yeah he's all right no <laughs> yeah, he's he, yeah, he's yeah. decent he's a decent nah, guy he's decent he pays his bills on time it's well fine. that's the worst thing that's the worst comment anyone could ever give you uh give or take uh, that's the worst thing that's you could worst. ever get because but because here's the thing. People watching your videos and hating you and commenting it and people watching your videos and loving you and commenting on it is all yeah. engagement that's driving right. ad, set, ad revenue and revenue for you and, and views. Somebody that doesn't care enough, eh, I'm not going to watch. I don't care. That's your biggest problem. I agree with you um, t- from a, uh, a utility. Uh, sorry, how do I say this? From a, lo- from a, from Logistic? a logistics right, right. perspective. Um, because you know that old saying, um, all publicity is good publicity. Yeah. I actually don't think that's true. Anymore. I, I agree with you. I think so either. fucking false. Yeah. I think bad publicity is actually better publicity <laughs> because negativity travels faster and farther. Yep. Absolutely. So if you're getting a shitload of negative comments now, I, you're in, in terms of the business, you're doing it. You're actually doing it right. Which I, I hate to I, say, I hate it. Yeah, I don't facts. like that. And I don't like to do that shit. But like, yeah, you get people mad at you. You want to play the villain. That's a role that some people have stepped into, sure. and they've made a career sure, out of it. Sure, sometimes though, you you can go, you can shoot yourself in the foot. Like, oh, like nearly a hundred percent of the time, <laughs> you can shoot yourself in the foot. Yeah, but, but you might. I'm I'm saying there's stuff you just you just can't come back from. I, I I'm thinking about that girl who threw a cat on the live stream right now, or the girl who beat her dog up. Wait a minute, what? Alin, so Alinity's the cat one, and she just got beat up by her cat now the other day. Oh. So it's even, 1-1. One, one. So she threw her cat, and Alinity, she's a Twitch streamer. Okay. She was singing the other day, and the cat really got her. You're, they have it in slow-mo. The lying. cat <laughs> pulled the skin off of her with, her, with the teeth, and it, you zoom in, and you could see. You fucking lie. Why did the cat do that? Uh, Why did the cat? Did anyone ask it? <laughs> Alinity's cat finally gets revenge. <laughs> I mean, it really fucking got her. Oh, yeah, she's hot. Wait she's, a minute. She's wait a minute. Really was, was she mean to the cat or was this just a cat being a weird cat? She threw her cat once. The cat doesn't like when she sings. 
And I think she was singing again. The cat doesn't like what she... Is this it? Yeah. Oh, shit. This cat scratched the shit out of her. No, bit, bit. Oh! <laughs> oh! Yo! The cat! Yo, look at it. Right now, it's like, fuck you, bitch. You heard? Bro, the cat wow. strikes strikes back. Oh, oh, my God. Wow. Oh my god! And so this went this went really big because the story about her throwing the cat is a viral story in the Twitch community, and and every time something happens on Twitch, she got no repercussion for throwing her cat. So every time like a girl's nipple slips out and they get banned, they say, "But you can abuse animals." And so everybody was waiting for the cat to strike back, and it fucking it got her. <laughs> go cat. It got her good. Go dude. cat. That was a strong buddy. Strong fucking buddy. yeah. Wow. I watched the uh, the Drake rap radar interview oh, yeah. okay. and i took notes on it i think he's i think he's the goat i think he's incredibly wise you mean like as a, as a person yeah he doesn't think he's a goat no well he <laughs> i mean you you like him as I, a singer or I, you like him as as the wisdom that he has to yeah, offer i don't i don't believe drake is a farm animal <laughs> <laughs> no both 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 yeah, yeah. That, okay. that's okay. why I, that's why i think he's the goat okay i love i love him as a person and i really love his music you have an opinion i can tell do you no, like to no i was i was listening sorry oh, okay. no i was listening so i was watching this and one of the notes i took was uh he said he he tries uh never to get never to get caught up too much in the highs or the, or the lows which is kind of what you were saying and, and your sentiment towards reacting towards both videos the, the really good ones that mm -hmm. tell you how great you are and the really bad ones it's i mean it's it's all noise dude it's cool it, it needs to be all noise yeah. or it'll pull you in each direction yeah that it that it it goes yeah, from right, day to day. It sucks. Right, right here, right here, yeah, and right here. If you stay in your circle and do the shit you love to do, and don't be too influenced by the people watching and the people just doing this because they can type on a keyboard, yeah, you'll be good. The one the one thing I took out of this conversation today, by the way, too, is um, both of you guys have done such a good job of breaking out. Like you you uh, you went into like stand up and then TED, and now you're yeah. starting a clothing company helping people you with boxing. And I think that that's kind of overlooked when it comes to internet creators and like YouTubers of how important it is to step out of that, out of that realm and into like something new, whether it be like, yeah, so like traditional media, whatever, you know? So, yeah, because look, uh, despite what anyone tell you, offer you a little, little bit of wisdom, which you, you already know, I'm sure, despite what anyone tells you, the way 99% of people experience success is not in this really straight long line that lasts their entire life. Even even if it from the outside, even if it looks like that, even if you look at Tom Cruise, you're like, well, he's been successful for for years. And you go, no, no, no. That's only because you, you you're not zoomed in far enough. Success comes in pockets, right? Yep. Right. And so you gotta like you gotta like catch each pocket as it comes because everything changes over time. I think I, I referenced it earlier where you know <coughs> po podcast might be out of favor in two years yep. and then you got to be then you got to like do the next thing you, you what you don't want to do is be like well i'm going down with this ship <laughs> then guess what's gonna happen you're gonna go down <laughs> with the ship you're gonna go down with it yeah I, lo I love that advice yeah it's it's a series of crests and troughs highs and lows and you just all you have to do very simple have more wins than you do losses yes and and stay on the up and up but if any any normal person's uh progression to success looks like this and i i'm on the cameras now so <laughs> right let's see how uh, if there's ups and downs little ones and then some no but then sometimes sometimes for my yep. my case yeah <laughs> or no and everyone you know, yeah but for, and, and everyone keep yeah. on that up and up yeah always always <sighs> and and yeah you jump from like pocket to pocket and that's that's the thing man when people talk about success like a thing I look at it as more of a personality trait, one that you can develop over time yeah. if you want. So you say someone is successful, and I say, well, they're a successful person, meaning that no matter what comes their way, they're going to make it work. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Most that really awesome. successful stories I know of yeah. are of successful people. Like, like, like they they did this for a while. They were very successful in that arena. Right. They went so not not most, I guess, but a lot of the stories of successful people are successful people, like you said. You have a lot of really strong insight. I didn't know that you were going to bring this. I, I agree. <laughs> this I was, is a, I was been gonna, a really good show. I was going to say, man. This, this was fucking phenomenal, yeah. bro. You are incredibly wise and articulate. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, of course, dude. Uh, and not that my validation means anything, but, uh, but I, 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 no, I'm secondary, I'm blessed. I'm you thankful. just tramp stamped them. I, I, Secondarily, <laughs> it does. It means a lot to him. <laughs> So yeah, my, my advice to you, and well, to, to really anyone about um, being successful, because I get asked about that a lot, and I'm sure you do too, is develop that personality trait. Yep. Don't wait for luck to come along. Luck happens. You can, we can point to a million people who got lucky, but luck, luck happens, 
but it doesn't stick around. Luck mm. happens once, mm. maybe twice in your life, mm. right? The people who stay successful for a long time, that's not luck. That is, that is something that they are doing in their approach to every single thing they do, that they make it work. Facts. Right? I, There's I, a reason I, why you went from being um, successful on Vine to having a successful podcast to, you know, you're, you're getting all the, the, I don't know how successful you are in boxing, but I'm sure you're kicking some ass. So I, in, a, in many ways, it's not even true. He's a good, he's a very good boxer. He just hasn't turned the engine on completely yet. One, one thing, <laughs> another th I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready. I'm going to, well, I'm warming up. He's I'll hit him next it. time. Yeah. The one, the one other thing you pointed out a little bit when you were saying about successful people too, is they, they diversify. Like he's try. like, think about it. The yeah. success rate of somebody who tries a lot of things is probably higher than somebody that says, I, I really like this and I'm going to do just that. And Most if, of the yeah. really uber successful people you know have tried a million things before the first thing hits. You know what I'm saying? And maybe some of the other ones hit pretty well, but then that one booms, you know? You gotta yeah. try things. And Get out there and do shit. You're, you're, if your video game thing had taken off, we'd all be playing Battlegrounds or whatever yeah. right now. Yeah. I would, right? I would the cat. Be we'd be doing that instead of this because yeah. that's, that's the way it happens, man. By the way, I... <laughs> I just I don't know I don't know Alinity or like anything about her, but like I feel bad because I know what it's like to be pinned as that one person who did that one thing. I don't you know I, I don't subscribe to that whatsoever. She she gets the cat that. Got she, the cat got yeah, it's even. But but I even. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's cool. She's but now the girl yeah. who got attacked by her cat. But even before that, like I didn't I didn't give I, like I didn't I didn't even see the Catherine video. I want to Alinity. That as it's well. jokes. Yeah, yeah, it's it's yeah. all jokes, dude. Um, they squash the beef. I'm, it's I'm, fine. I'm, yeah uh, yeah. All right. Uh, Ray, thank thank you. I I, I want to see this TED talk. So if you can risk getting the coronavirus and going to Belgium for it, <laughs> I'll give it at some point. Maybe not just maybe not this round because you know. Okay, that makes sense. Nice. Where can they find you on social media if they want to do that? Um, uh, you can you can search me Ray William Johnson. That's my handle everywhere. Yeah, for, makes, yeah, like, that makes like, sense. Like uh, yeah. Facebook, YouTube. Um, Instagram. I run like twelve Facebook accounts. You, you got all you. that. You like, got you. You got all you. that. Like make money doing different oh, things. Yeah. Facebook. Like they're different branded. Sharp. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Anyway, but yeah, you very can find cool. Me. Very cool. Thank you for coming on, brother. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me, guys. And for everyone listening, thanks for being a part of our now plus two million subscriber gang, gang, Woo! gang skirt. We love you. We'll Congrats. see you next time. Take it easy. Peace.